Hello, and thank you for inviting me to join IBM's Think Event. My name is Marjorie McBrien, and I'm the Managing Director at the Climate Disclosure Standards Board. One of the leading ESG standard setters focused on ensuring that environmental and social information is integrated into corporate financial accounts with the same rigour as financial information. And I'm delighted today to give you a brief introduction to the Task Force on Climate Related Financial Disclosures, known as the TCFD, and their recommendations and why they're important, what features the best reports contain and where you can find out more. So what is the TCFD? It all started back in April 2015 when the leaders of the G20 called on the Financial Stability Board to explore how climate change could pose a risk to the global financial system. Understanding how required looking across two separate dimensions of risk. The physical risks from a changing climate, such as sea level rises and more infrequent or severe incidents of extreme weather, and the transition risk faced by companies in the shift to a lower carbon economy, which may include policy and regulatory changes, disruptive technologies, and a shift in consumer demand. The FSB concluded that companies were systematically underreporting the risk they face from climate change. The result is that investors and regulators do not have the adequate information to properly manage this uncertainty. And this poses a systemic risk to the global financial stability. So in response to this threat, the FSB convened an industry-led task force on climate-related financial disclosures with representations from some of the world's largest investors, banks, companies, insurers, accounting firms and ratings agencies. And the purpose of the task force was to develop a common global approach for companies to report on how climate will affect their business. In June 2017, the TCFD published its final recommendations, setting out a clear and consistent structure for climate-related financial disclosures. The recommendations are widely adoptable and applicable to all organisations and sectors across jurisdictions and are designed to solicit consistent, comparable, reliable, forward-looking information in a decision-useful manner to providers of capital via the mainstream corporate report. Adoption of the TCFD approach provides investors, banks and insurers with the necessary information on climate risk and opportunities to help minimise the risk that market adjustments to climate change will be incomplete, late and potentially destabilising. But what are these recommendations I'm talking about? So the TCFD recommendations provide a structure for companies on how to report the financial impacts from climate change on their business through their existing processes. This differs from the approach taken by many businesses today that solely focus on reporting the impact of the organisation on the environment. At the centre of the TCFD recommendations there are four thematic areas. The first is governance, setting out the roles of the boards and the management team in managing risks and opportunities. Second is strategy, identifying risks and opportunities over different time horizons and explaining how these impact strategic and financial planning. The third is risk management, having processes in place for quantifying and managing identified risks and including these within the overall risk management framework. And the last is metrics and targets, explaining how both climate change impact and exposure to risks are measured, setting targets and tracking ongoing progress. This is supplemented by 11 recommended disclosures under these four thematic headings designed to elicit information on how organisations think about and assess climate related risks and opportunities. It aims to bring greater transparency to company reporting, ultimately giving investors the information they need to make better informed decisions on where to deploy their capital. But why should you care? If you're joining us from New Zealand, the answer is simple. We are very excited to see New Zealand become the first globally to make TCFD mandatory through amending its Financial Markets Act. And we're proud to be supporting both the government and the, government and the market in this process. And closer to home, Australia has seen APRA and ASIC laying stakes in the ground, declaring that climate is a foreseeable material risk and needs to be disclosed, with the Australian Accounting Standards Board publishing guidance on reporting material climate risk, the first of its kind in the world. There are also significant momentum globally in other governments and regulators across the world, as they seek to mandate TCFD in the lead up to COP26 in November 2021. The TCFD recommendations to date have been supported by over 1,700 financial institutions, businesses and governments globally, and are gaining momentum, particularly within the regulatory community. It's been discussed at the global level by the G20 Financial Stability Board, it's covered at the European level by the Non-Financial Reporting Directive, the UK announced it expects all publicly listed companies and large asset owners to disclose in line with the TCFD by 2022. The Network for Greening the Financial System, so the central bankers and supervisors, have climate risk disclosure high on their agenda, as well as climate risk disclosure featuring in President Biden's plan for his first 100 days in office. But even without this incredible momentum, climate is a foreseeable material risk. And just like any other, company directors are required to consider foreseeable material impacts on company performance 
and failure to do so leaves board members open to the possibility of litigation with or without the TCFD. We already saw shareholders in the Commonwealth Bank of Australia making a claim for misleading disclosures, which was dropped after the bank changed track, committing to undertaking the TCFD recommendations and now producing a globally leading example of how to communicate those. So who is TCFD important to then? The successful implementation of TCFD really does start at the board, considering climate matters when reviewing and guiding strategy, risk management policies, annual budgets and business plans, monitoring the implementation and performance and overseeing major capital expenditures. It is then the C-suite's duty to assign responsibility and reporting lines, establish processes by which management is informed about climate related issues and how management monitors these. The CFO has a real leading role to play, drawing together risk assessment, governance and strategic thinking, ensuring that this is coherently represented within the financial statements. As financial reporting traditionally does not look forward, clearly representing the organisation's position and future actions on this topic can be a significant challenge and CFOs are really well placed to help address this. Tell me who's doing TCFD best, I often get asked, and there's no one perfect example. However, leading practice is emerging under the four thematic areas. So, for example, on scenario analysis, BHP Billiton, West Packer, Stat Oil are all leading the way. QBE publishes an excellent roadmap communicating its approach to tackling the recommendations and what they are doing year on year to meet these requirements. HSBC provides a clear and coherent table summarising the TCFD recommended disclosures. So as a generalisation, the best reporting we've seen to date coming from, is coming from the finance sector and the heavy emitters. A crucial area of TCFD that is still falling short of expectations is the connection from risk and opportunity identification and quantification to what that means for companies' balance sheets. And BP is an example of where we have started to see write-downs, but these are really few and far in between. The most common questions I get asked on TCFD are, how do I do it? What does it look like? And who else is doing it? These are really valid. A good place to start is the TCFD Knowledge Hub. My team at CDSB power this mecca of useful resources categorised via thematic areas of TCFD, supported by other useful features such as case studies and soon to be a report library. It also includes an e-learning platform with a series of freely available CPD accredited courses to help undertake TCFD, ranging from what are the recommendations right through to more detailed courses on risk and governance. And the CDSB website is another useful resource. We have checklists for getting started and how to assess if you've completed the work, detailed implementation guidance and annotated extracts from company reports. And lastly, the TCFD website provides recommendations, status reports and the most recent guidance they've released on metrics and scenarios, which is really useful. So in conclusion, across 2021, I expect to see a continuing of the step change we've seen in recent years in investor and regulatory expectations around ESG reporting, but more specifically on climate as we move along the road to the annual intergovernmental climate talks COP26. The transition to a low carbon economy will fundamentally change the world around us. My advice is to get started, lay out a roadmap, undertake a gap analysis of what you already have and get started with the narrative ASAP before it becomes mandatory and the costs of catching up are much greater, not just for your business, but for society. We do not have time to waste. Thank you.